everyone. Well, today's video is going to be a bit more relaxed and chatty. I'm still going to be showing you some toy vacuum cleaners, but uh, I've also got, as you can see, a real vacuum here. Although some people might say, no, that's not a real vacuum, that's a shark. Well, it's very real to me. And the shark brand is very, very popular. I think it's the best selling brand in the US and I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the top brands in the UK now. So you might have, you will have seen I did an unboxing of that a few days ago because I've only just got it. I uploaded that unboxing the day I got it. So I've been using it around the house. I do like it. It's, I think it's my favourite. So far out of the Shark Cordless machines, there's a few niggles with it, which I'll explain when I do the full demo in the new year. But I'm, I really like it. Um, so yes, here's the, uh, I'll put that to one side. You can see it's quite full. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know where it's finding the dirt. There's some, <laughs> there's some polystyrene beads I've been cleaning up with it, you know, because they get everywhere, those polystyrene beads, when you're demonstrating toy vacuums. So today I want to talk about toy vacuum cleaners that I had as a child growing up because toy vacuum cleaners have been around a lot longer than you may think certainly from the 1950s maybe even a bit earlier than that but the 50s i definitely know that there were some upright hoover toys and possibly cylinder ones now these two machines are the toy vacuums I remember most from my childhood and these were fairly popular this particular one here the uh, sort of cream and brown one was available right up into the 1980s now this isn't my new one but I do have a new in the box one of these that I bought in the 1980s from my mum's Grattan catalogue and I never used it and this is a second-hand one I've got that's a bit worse for wear. These were available for many years and they were updated as Hoover updated their cleaners. So did the manufacturer of these toys. They updated them um, to match the real thing, but also to make them a bit cheaper. As with the real thing, manufacturers obviously change things to make them cheaper to produce so they can still be competitive and to also make them quicker to assemble. And that's no different with these toys. Fundamentally, they were the same, but small changes were made as, you know, as the production went along. So this is a toy upright cleaner based, of course, on the Hoover Dirt Searcher. I do have a, a real dirt searcher if you check my channel. And this one is based, of course, on the standard Hoover Junior and in this colorway, as I said, this is the last, as far as I know, this colorway in this model was the last of its type before we got a toy Hoover Turbo Power. And then the only other Hoover Upright that I know of is the Pure Power, which I've, I've got out, hang on, still got it here. I haven't put all these vacuums away yet. Um, so there's the Pure Power. I'm not sure if that's, to scale actually no the pure power is a much bigger scale really but uh, obviously that's uh, made by Theo Klein these were made by a company called Wells Kello now the fundamental problem with these now some people might not be aware that these actually did pick up none of the ones I've ever bought secondhand have ever worked and I don't know why it must be something that happens in storage because my brand new one of these it doesn't work either and yet I never really used it I pushed it around a couple of times and put it back in its box but never properly used it so there is a f something that happens to the motor because yes these do have a friction drive motor inside them now the motor, I'll show you on the underside. Okay, so this is the underside of the vacuum. Now, as you can see, there is a brush, an actual brush roll. And this one's quite dirty, it's got bits on it. So it did actually sweep and the brush worked basically. And that, that sort of works as you push the cleaner back and forward. 
it obviously needs some work doing to it, it made the brush roller move. Now, it did also have suction because under here is a fan and under the hood is a motor. In fact, I'll show you, I'll get my screwdriver and show you that it actually has a motor, but it's a friction drive. And the friction drive motor works via the two wheels at the back. Now, there is a hole there that you can apply oil. And I don't think that's gonna solve the problem with this one. But basically, when you push the cleaner back and forth, the front wheels moved the brush and the back wheels operated the friction drive motor which turned the fan, which created some suction. So it did brush and it did suction up dirt into the bag. And the bags on these actually inflated like the real thing. But I can't show you that with any of these. One of them might work slightly. But they inflated fully. These are made of a vinyl material. This bag, I'm afraid, is pretty damaged. But it, they always had a couple of holes somewhere, I believe, to allow the air to go f to, to flow through because obviously it still needs airflow. So there's a couple of small holes somewhere on the bag. And as you push the machine, obviously it's not working this one, the friction drive motor would create the suction, which, which, which obviously blew out the exhaust uh, air into the bag and the bag inflated just like the real thing. And it actually did pick up dirt and it was probably far more effective than any of the battery toys I've been showing you. It actually picked up real dirt, not just polystyrene balls. You could actually pick up proper dirt with this cleaner. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you what's under the hood of one of these and see if we can troubleshoot it. I would, I've got absolutely, well, quite a few of these models. None of them work and I really need to spend some time trying to fix them. It's possibly quite an easy fix. So if I just undo the screws, I think I'll only have to undo three to access the motor, so to speak. And you know, back in the day, not sure how many friction drive toys you get now, but you could you could buy friction drive cars or pull back and go cars. But the friction drive ones, they somehow, I don't know how it works, but <laughs> they managed to store the energy and you could sort of charge up the car by just moving it and then you would release it sort of thing. So, what you'll see when I open it is, uh, is, from what I remember, something that looks a bit like clockwork. Lots of cogs and gears. All right, so there we go. All right, I'll take off the bag. And I'm just gonna take off the front cover. I think that does come off in a similar way. Oh, that's it. No, there's no, there's no screw there. Perhaps I have to undo that screw. Yes, I'll try, I'll undo the front screw as well. Yes, one day I'll find time and actually renovate these and get them working. Because, you know, it is a very clever way that they work. And of course it fascinated me as a young child. Oh. Oh right. Okay. Oh, that's not that's not happening as I thought it would. But there you go. Look at that, folks. Oh, look at the hook. Now you can s look at that. Now this is what I mean. Obviously, it's all bunged up. This is what I mean about it collecting real dirt. You wouldn't find a, a toy vacuum today picking up. That looks like the sort of stuff a real vacuum cleaner would pick up. And look at the fan. It's. It actually is, a, oh crikey, look at, never had this open. No wonder that doesn't work. But it works in a, a very similar way. It probably wouldn't take much to fix this. Ah, oh, right, look. Crikey, that, that is a lot simpler than I remember. This is all it is, look at it just, so why doesn't it work, I wonder? 
there is some more gubbins actually that we need to look at the problem I expect is actually in the base not in this part because I think once that's sprayed with a bit of WD-40 cleaned out those cogs seem okay so basically the cogs drive the fan as you push the machine around but you know it's obviously not working but I, I can't believe all that fluff that's in here crikey <laughs> look at all that so yes I think I've taken it apart a bit more than I was going to but I think yes the main problem there's a cog in there. Can you just see that cog? I can't see that this is going... These these are probably going to be quite an easy fix. As I say, there's an oil hole, which I've never really noticed. I never oiled any of them. I did try oiling one to see if it fixed it, but it didn't. But I think, yeah, I mean, I might tempt, I'll try it with this one because I do have a, a, you know, obviously one in much better condition. I'm not bothered if I break it, but it'd be interesting at some other time to actually see if I can get into this part because I think that's where the problem lies inside there. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. Oh, okay, so there's a bit of a, a bit of a breakage there look I could fix that with some glue but yeah I can't see there being much problem getting those working again now the model with a headlight works in much the same way basically it'll be the same under the hood and as you can see underneath the same layout this one is better because it sometimes does connect so it's not as bad now this one does that one have one as well yes it does it has the height i've got the hoover height to height controller on the side obviously that's a dummy it doesn't do anything but the headlight actually does work but you'll find if you buy one of these most of the time the headlights don't work Right, I've just lost the lens. The glue's come off that. It, again, it's very, very simple. Two AA batteries, I think. And basically, with this arrangement, possibly needs a new bulb. You can see how it's, it's all corroded in there because the batteries have obviously leaked. But I think how this worked, there was a switch somewhere hidden inside. So basically, when you lowered the handle, it turned a switch on, which made the light illuminate. So that really added to the sort of play value to have a little light. But again, you know, it's fairly simple. I, I can probably fix these. I've got a few machines that are in worse condition that I can use for donor parts. So yeah, it would be good to get these working. But that actually does... You see, what should happen, it won't stop and start. It, as you move it, the motor continues to run, more or less constantly, and the bag will remain constantly inflated as long as you keep moving the machine. And that bag did inflate slightly on that, so there is hope. I think there's hope for all these toy cleaners that I've got that I can get them working again. Now another type of toy upright was based on the Senior. This is an earlier version and when it was called the Deluxe Deluxe Hoover Cleaner. So this is based on the Senior or if you're watching from the USA, the Hoover Convertible. This is an older version and it's not in the best of shape. But this is an example of how they cheapened the toy as the years went by because this earlier one and there are earlier versions than this based on earlier models before this sort of 60s model I have seen earlier ones this actually has a, um, a pedal to release the handle but it doesn't really work 
but there was a pedal I'm not sure if there was supposed to be a rubber part on there you know a little uh, grip thing so it had the pedal it's actually got a painted handle whereas in the later ones the handle's still metal but they didn't bother painting it even the bag slide at the top that's metal as well and again the hoover logo you see how it's it's raised and it looks like the miniature version on the later ones to show you the cover plate of the hoover junior it's just a sticker on the underside though again it's the same sort of thing this one's quite clean this brush roll so yeah that works well but again i think the friction drive motor that's funny this one has got two holes for oil but again there's something wrong it's not engaging with the cogs in order for it to actually create the suction now this the hood on this is broken the hood comes off these without the need of uh, any screwdriver because again now uh, a little bit more elaborate setup and you can see look this in the earlier this is metal plastic in the uh, later one but the cogs in here the whole thing is metal so I've more chance I think of getting that to work it probably wouldn't take much to get that going and actually in this one the battery compartment looks a lot cleaner It'd be two double a batteries obviously there's no bulb but i can still buy a bulb for that but there's no corrosion on those contacts and you can see actually on this one with the hood off just there there is the switch and again that possibly needs looking at but there is a tiny little contact there so that's what as i said as you put the machine in the working position that should switch on the headlights so yes there's hope for this this isn't in bad shape the bag is okay on this one and it's just the hood unfortunately is uh, it's obviously been repaired and not very well I might if I can get all that glue marks off I might be able to do something with it but I have a couple more of these I've got a blue and white one and I've got a pink one the blue and white one matches the dirt searcher and is newer than this but that looks pretty clean and tidy in there so I've hopes that I can get that working so this is a Hoover Deluxe or Senior so both of these were available probably I don't know maybe a pound or two difference in toy shops between this one and the regular one and maybe only a pound difference possibly between the dirt searcher junior and the standard one but I, they are lovely little toys and they again they are pretty accurate miniature versions of the real thing i do like them and as i said this is the sort of toy i had as a child so these were available for children for many years and I think they were mainly aimed at little girls it wasn't really considered something a little boy would want but of course nowadays we see toy vacuums with pictures of boys on the box playing with them as much as the little girls so I think possibly little boys did want them because I did but manufacturers and the parents my mum and dad were great because they let you know they bought them for me i wanted them and obviously i showed an interest in vacuums from a very very young age and i wanted to play with vacuums and i got to play with real vacuums obviously growing up but to have your own toy was something i wanted and yes bless them my mum and dad did indulge my interest but i know a lot of lot of young people out there light vacuums and that's why they still produce them especially the henry ones which are very popular um and they're still purchased but it was as i said it was little girls back in the day little girls were brought up to look after the house they got married they looked after the house they didn't have a career their role in life and this is historically true i'm not sort of being sexist or anything but historically not just in the UK, I'm sure in America as well. 
Little girls are brought up um, and taught at school to cook and sew and keep house. And before school, you know, in infant school and um, primary school, they played houses and they had toy vacuums, toy cookers, Wendy houses, toy pots and pa pans. And, you know, that's what little girls, boys played with tanks and cars and soldiers and girls played with dolls toy vacuums, toy irons, and that's how it was. That's the history of, of gender toys, really. They're specific genders, um, specific toys for boys, specific toys for girls. That is still happens today, obviously, but not as... It wasn't as defined back in when I was growing up. You were a boy, you like blue and guns and soldiers and cars and building. And you are a girl, you had to like pink, dollies, keeping house, girly things. You know what I mean? This is how I was brought up and how a lot of people were brought up. But nowadays, of course, anything goes, doesn't it? But I'm really pleased that I could have this sort of toy growing up. And I'm sure the children today will look back and think, well, they're spoilt for choice, as you've seen with the number of toy vacuums I've been showing you over the past few weeks. And I've still got a lot more I could show you. Absolutely loads of different choices if you want a toy or a miniature version of the real thing. Today, you're spoilt for choice. So anyway, that's a little bit of history on toy vacuum cleaners. Maybe one day when I have time, of course, my priority for next year is getting the real vacuum demos done. Lots and lots to come. But uh, maybe when I find some time, I'll uh, tinker with all my toys and try and get them working. Because when they work, they are absolutely fantastic to see the headlight and the bag inflating. So it will really take me back to uh, my childhood. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, tune in for another video tomorrow if you're watching the whole series when it uh, when I release it and uh, I'll be back in the new year with a lot of different va videos for you vacuums carpet washers robotic vacuums floor washers all sorts coming up you're in for a treat I can assure you so for me the Hoover senior and the dirt searcher and the junior lying in bits Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.